Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in revision of your mathematics in preparation for your November exams. I have no idea why the previous site said grade 12. I apologize for that. Right, let's get stuck in. So we are looking at these. I apologize for the quality of the copy. This actually comes from the Department of Education. They actually scanned it in. And I'm afraid that is the quality of the um, paper that we got. And obviously I wanted to do these questions because it is good to do the grade, the exam paper questions that come from the Department of Education. So let's get stuck in straight away with solving for x. Let's do the first one. We've got x, x minus 1 equals 20. So obviously what we need to do is we need to multiply this out and then see if we can factorize. The reason they give us this is because they're sneaky. They're expecting you to make the mistake that go, you know, if I gave you x, x minus one equals zero, you'd go, ah, oh, this is easy. We've got x equals zero or x minus one equals zero. So they're kind of anticipating that some students are gonna do that. They're anticipating that you're gonna go x equals 20 or x minus 1 equals 20, which is not the case at all. So therefore, this is not correct. Now, I know that some of you are thinking, well, this is obvious that x is going to be a specific number. But what I want you to do is solve it because the marks allocated for this are for solving. So we have to multiply it out. So x times x is x squared x times minus 1 is minus x. And then we're going to bring the 20 across. It becomes minus 20 equals 0. So you can see that this is a beautiful trinomial. So we need to factorize it. So when we do that, we get two brackets. OK, and this is obviously x and x. The minus tells us that the signs are different. And the minus over here tells us the bigger of the two factors is going to have the minus. So let's look at the factors of this x squared, the factor those are 1 and 1. The factors of 20 are 20 and 1, 10 and 2, and 5 and 4. 4. Obviously, we want the difference to be minus 1. So 20 minus 1 is 19. 10 minus 2 is 8. But 5 minus 4 is a 1. So that works. But now notice that we want a minus 1. So we're going to have x minus 5. x plus 4 equals 0. Therefore, we've got x minus 5 equals 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to 5 or x is equal to negative 4. Ta -da! Right, now let's look at the next example. So let's raise all ink and go to black. Let's do this one. We've got 3x minus 2 minus 4 over x equals 0. Okay, so possibly the best way to solve this would be to multiply everything by x to get rid of this x as a denominator. So if we do that, we've got 3x squared, because 3x times by x is x squared, minus 2x, minus 4, because by multiplying this by x, we get rid of this denominator x, which is what we were planning to do. And now do you see we've got a beautiful trinomial again. So again, we have two brackets. Okay, the factors of 3 are 3 and 1. The factors of 4 are 4 and 1, 1 and 4, and 2 and 2. Okay, and again, we know that they both, one of them is going to be a minus and the other one is going to be a plus. And we need the difference of the two to be a two. So three times one is three and one times four is four. The difference of them is one, so that won't work. Three times four is 12 and one times one is one. That's not going to work. Three times two is six and one times two is one times two is two. So that's not going to work either. OK, so do you agree that this means we need to use the formula? We need to use 
the formula. I'm just going to think about this again. Three and one and one and four. That's right. Okay, right. So we need to use the formula. So the formula is x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay. Now remember that the this bit is a, the whole of that is b, and the whole of that is c. A lot of people make the mistake of saying that just the 2 is b and just the 4 is c. You've got to bring that negative and negative over there with you, okay? Right, so now let's substitute in. So you get x is equal to minus, minus 2, plus or minus the square root of minus 2 squared, minus 4, times by 3, times minus 4, all over 2 times 3. Minus times a minus is a plus, so it's 2 plus or minus the square root of minus 2 squared is 4. Minus times a minus is a plus. 4 times 3 is 12, times by 4 is 48, all over 6, which becomes 2 plus or minus the square root of 52 all over 6. Okay, so let us get out our calculators. So we're going to clear this, clear it, and we're going to write a fraction, and we're going to go 2 plus the square root of 52 all over 6 equals 1.54 or 1.5 so x equals let me write it over here x equals 1 comma 5 or and let's find that calculator again and go back and just change that to minus delete minus equals which become minus 0.9, minus 0.9. Notice I'm rounding off to one decimal place. There you go. So that is the solution for number two. Let's go through the third one. So I'm going to erase all the ink and I'm going to change to purple. So we got square root 2 minus x minus 4 equals x. Okay, now the cool thing about this is we can get rid of the square root by squaring everything, but we can only do that once we get everything that's under the square root on one side and that everything that's not under the square root on the other side, okay? So let's do that. We've got square root of 2 minus x is equal to x minus x plus 4, okay? All I'm doing is taking this and taking it to the other side. Now we can square both sides. So we've got 2, oh geez, goodness, 2 minus x is equal to x plus 4 all squared. Okay, so now do you agree that we can factorize? I mean, we can multiply this out and then factorize. Okay, so we've got 2 minus x is equal to x squared. We multiply this, you went to you multiply these two and then double it. So it's x times 4 is 4x and you double it. Becomes plus 8x plus the square of 8, uh, 4 is 16. I don't know why I've got brackets. So let's... Right, now let's take everything to the other side. So we've got 0 is x squared plus 8x plus x plus 16 minus 2 which becomes x squared plus 9x plus 14. Right, so now do you agree that we can, remember this is all equal to 0, so we can factorize this, okay, we can do it in two brackets, this is an x and an x and a plus and a plus the factors are 14 already easy. It's 14 and 1 and 7 and 2. So it obviously has to be 7 and 2 and 7 plus 2 do add up to 9. So that works. 
Okay, therefore, x is going to equal to minus 7 or x is equal to minus 2. And now, because this was a square root, we do actually need to check it. We do actually need to check it. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute both these values into the first line and see if it works. So the square root of 2 minus minus 7 minus 4 is going to be equal to what? 2 minus minus 7 is 9. So you've got 9 minus 4, which is 5, which does not equal minus 7. So that does not work. Let's try for this one. The square root of 2 minus minus 2 minus 4 is equal to the square root. 2 minus minus 2 is 4, 4 minus 4, which is 2 minus 4, which equals minus 2, which works. So that one works. So whenever you have something like this, which is a third, you always, always, always have to test it to make sure it works. Okay, you have to have to test it always. Okay, let's continue with doing the next question. So we're going to raise all the ink and we're going to look at this one. Now this one is quite interesting. It looks quite scary, but it's not really. It says 5x and negative 3 over 2 minus 32 x to the minus 32 3 over 2 plus 4 equals 0. Now what you've got to realize with this is that a lot of students again will think that they have to multiply it out, okay? But you don't have to. What we're saying is either this equals naught or this equals naught. We already have factorized to that point. You now just have to solve for each of these. So what we're looking at is solving each of these separately. So we're going to go 5x minus 3 over 2 minus 32 equals 0 or x to the minus 3 over 2 plus 4 equals 0. If we take this across, we've got 5x to the minus 3 over 2 is equal to 32, or x to the negative 3 over 2 is equal to negative 4. Now we can divide. Hmm, it's horrible this by 5. So we get x minus 3 over 2 is equal to 32 over 5. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both of these to the power of minus 2 over 3. By doing that, what we are doing is we're getting rid of this exponent. In other words, I'm going to go x to the minus 3 over 2 multiplied by minus 2 over 3 is equal to 32 over 5 to the power of negative 2 over 3. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the side, okay? I'm just going to do dotted lines so you can see what the difference is. So I've got x to the minus 3 over 2 times by minus 2 to the power over 3 is equal to negative 4 to the power of minus 2 over 3. Okay, that cancels, so you're just left with x. So let's just solve this one here, this side, okay? So what I'm going to do is just erase all of this. So I've got space to write. Okay, I'm going to write it up above, and I'm actually going to change color as well so you can see what I'm doing. So this thing here becomes x is equal to 32 over 5 to the power of negative 2 over 3. That's what it's saying, right? So the minus means you flip it, okay? So that becomes 5 over 32 to the power of 2 over 3. Now 5 unfortunately cannot be made much easier when you do to the power of 2 over 3, but 32 
if we look at it, do you agree it becomes 32 if we take it divided by 2? It is 16. If we divide it by 2, it is going to be 8. If you divide it by 2, it is 4. If you divide it by 2, it is 2. If you divide it by 2, it is 1. So 32 is to the power of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so in other words, we've got 5 to the power of 2 over 3 all over... Yeah, I'm right. 2 to the power of 5 to the power of 2 over 3. Okay. So this is the cube root of 25. Okay, 5 squared is 25. So that's the cube root of 25. This is going to be 2 to the power of 10 over 3. Okay, so basically there's nothing we can do with it, so we leave it at that. I would leave it there. Uh, this doesn't make it any nicer. Now let's look at the other side. Okay, the other side, which has got the 4 in it. So I would leave the answer as this answer here, because there's nothing nice we can do with that. That's it. Okay, if we look at this one, We've now got x is equal to minus 4 to the power of minus 2 over 3. Do you agree that becomes minus 2 squared to the negative 2 over 3, which then becomes minus 2 to the negative 4 over 3, okay? which then becomes, wait, I'm going to get there, <laughs> okay, um, which then becomes minus 1 over 2 to the power of 4 over 3, 2 to the power of 4, okay, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, to the power of 4 is 16. So this becomes the cube root of 16. So this is the same as 1 over negative the cube root of 16. And again, it's not a very nice answer, but that's basically the answer for this. Okay, next question. This one is a sneaky question. Okay. It looks super easy and it actually is a very easy question. But the reason it's sneaky is because a lot of students will go, mm, well, I'll divide this by x to get 1 and I'll divide this by x to get x squared and then therefore x equals 1. Okay? But that's not how you do this. What, how, the way that you actually do this is you actually take everything to the one side. So you've got x cubed, because you're missing answers here, x squared cubed minus x equals 0. Now you can take out a factor of x, and you're left with x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Then we're taking the sum and difference of two squares. You've got x, x minus 1, x plus 1, equals 0, therefore x equals 0, or x equals 1, or x is equal to minus 1. So do you see by cancelling, you would definitely lose the x equals 0 line um, answer, and you possibly might lose the x equals minus 1 answer if you didn't think to do it. So always, when you have something like, something like this, bring it all to the one side and factorize properly. Okay, let's look at the next question. Okay, we've got 3 to the 2x minus 10 times 3 to the x minus, equals minus 9. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take this minus 9 and bring it over to this side. So then I've got 3 to the 2x minus 10 times 3 to the x plus 9 equals 0. 
And now I'm hoping you realize that this 3 to the x is in the place of an x for a trinomial. In other words, if we let x equal 3 to the x, then do you agree that x squared would be 3 to the x all squared, which would be the same as 3 to the 2x? So I could write this as x squared minus 10x plus 9 equals zero, which means I could now factorize this as x and x and minus and a minus and a nine and a one, which therefore means that x equals nine or x equals one. But remember, we're not really finished because x represented three to the x. Therefore, we've got 3 to the x equals 9, or 3 to the x equals 1. Therefore, x is actually equal to 3, because 3 to the power, actually squared, 3 squared is 9, or x equals 0, because anything to the 0 is 1. So if you see something like this, where you've got 3 to the x and 3 to the 2x, think to you substitution, it makes it a lot easier, much easier. Right, now let's try this one. We've got minus x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x is smaller than 0. So do you agree I could divide everything by minus x to get rid of all these x, extra x's? So if I do that, I get minus x, I've got x squared minus 5x, and then I've got plus 4, but now because I divided by a minus, the sign changes to positive 0. Now I can factorize this. I can go minus x, but x and x, minus and a minus, a 4 and a 1. Minus 4 times minus 1 is 4, and minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5. That works. So whenever you have an inequality, you have to have to do a number line. Okay? So the first one, obviously, is for 0, right? This is for x equals 1, and this is for x equals 4. At all of these, we get a big fat 0. But now we want to know is when is this whole expression bigger than zero. Okay, so let's choose five. Okay, that would be minus five. Five minus one is a positive. Five minus one is a positive. So we get minus times a plus is a minus, times a plus is a minus. Let's choose a number between one and four. I don't know, let's choose three. In that case, this is going to be a negative again. Three minus four is a negative, and that's a plus. So minus times a minus is a plus, times a plus is a plus, yay. Now normally we would assume it goes minus plus, minus plus, but guys, it's worth the marks to just check it out, to test to see if it really is minus plus, minus plus. So choose a number between naught and one. I don't care, let's choose a half. If we do that, this becomes negative. It's always gonna be negative. A half minus four is negative. A half minus one is negative. Three negatives is a negative. Okay, it looks like it's fitting with pattern. Let's choose any number that's smaller than naught. Let's choose minus one. Minus times minus one is positive. Minus 1 minus 4 is negative. Minus 1 minus 1 is negative. So that becomes a positive. So do you agree this whole expression is positive from here onwards and from here to here? And you'll notice these circles are open because it doesn't include these numbers. Therefore, x is smaller than 0 or x has to be smaller than 4 and greater than 1. Ta -da! Okay, not too bad, hey? Right, last question on this page, and also the last, it's also an inequality. We've got 
3 to x, oopsie, x minus 5 is smaller than 0. Hmm. Okay, so do you agree when we have 3 to the x, we need to find it when 3 to x equals 0. Okay, so 3 to the x never equals 0. Think about it. 3 to the 0 is equal to 1. 3 to the negative 6, for example, is just going to be 1 over 3 to the 6. And 3 to the positive number is going to be a very big positive number. So this dude is always positive. So we only have to look at when this dude is negative because a plus times a minus is a minus and we want it to be negative. So you've got a number line with 5. You always have to draw a number line if with an inequality even if it's the most easy question in the entire world or if it's the most obvious number line. Okay? And we're going to multiply everything. It doesn't matter. When this is negative, then the whole of this is negative, right? So, 4 minus 5 is negative. So, anything smaller than 5 is going to work. So, therefore, the answer for this is x is smaller than 5. Ta-da! Done. The trick with this question was realizing that this thing here was always positive. Next question. Now it says, simplify as far as possible, leaving your answer with positive exponents. Guys, you have to be so careful about this. If they ask you to leave your answer in positive exponents and you don't, then you are being silly because you already are going to be losing your marks. Okay, so we've got 45 to the power of 1 minus n, multiplied by 5 to the n minus 1, multiplied by 81 to the negative 1, all over 4 to the power of n plus 2 multiplied by 36 to the negative n negative 1. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use prime factorization and get these things into the little x things that they need to be, okay? So let's do that. What can we factorize 45 into? So let's do 45. Do you agree that the smallest prime factor that goes into 45 is 3? 3 goes into 45, 15 times. 3 goes into 15, 5 times. And 5 goes into 5 once. So therefore, I can write this as 3 squared times 5, 5, all to the power of 1 minus n, multiplied by 5 to the n minus 1, multiplied, let's do 81, prime factor of 81 is 3, 3 goes into 8, 20, remainder 2, that's 27 times, 3 goes into 27, 9 times, 3 goes into 9, 3 times, and 3 goes into 3 once. So that is 3 to the power of 4 to the negative 1 all over. 4 degrees the same as 2 squared to the power of n plus 2. 36, let's do 36, 36. Okay, 2 goes into 36 18 times. 3 goes into 18 9 times. 3 goes, no it doesn't. 3 goes into 18 6 times. Sorry, my bad. In which case it should be a 2 actually. Let me fix that. Let me fix that. So it goes, 2 goes into 36 18 times. 2 goes into 18 9 times. 3 goes into 9 3 times. And 3 goes into 3 once. So this can be written as 2 squared times by 3 squared, all to the power of minus n minus 1. Okay, so now what we're going to do is break these up and apply the exponents to each of them, okay? So it becomes 3 to the 2 minus 2n, 5 to the 1 minus n, 5 to the n minus 1, 3 to the negative 4, all over, 2 to 2n plus 4, 2 to the minus 2n minus 2, 3 to the minus 2n minus 2. 
Okay, and now I'm going to raise all my prime factorization so I can collect everything together. Okay, so now we need to collect all the things together. I'm change color just so that you can see what I'm doing. So let's collect all the threes. We've got three, three, and three. So we've got three, so two minus two again, minus four, minus, because it's in the denominator, minus two and minus two, multiplied, oh, multiplied, this is still in the numerator, yeah, with the fives, five to the one minus n plus n minus one, and that's all going to be divided by two to the two n plus four minus 2n minus 2. Okay, so this becomes 3. 2 minus 4 is minus 2, so it's minus 2 minus 2n plus 2n plus 2. Minus times a minus is a plus. Minus times a minus is a plus. Multiplied by 5. 1 cancels with minus 1 and minus n to the plus n sets to the 0. All over 2n cancels with minus 2 and minus 2 cancels that so it becomes 2 squared, which becomes 3. Minus 2n cancels with plus 2n. Minus 2n cancels with plus 2n sets 3 to the 0, 5 to the 0, which is just 1. So the answer to this is 1 over 4. Because 3 to 0 is 1, 5 to 0 is 1, and 2 squared is 4. There you go. Ha! Okay, now let's do this one. Again, we need to simplify this, leaving everything with positive exponents when necessary. Okay. So this time we've got 2 to the 2n minus 2 to the n plus 2 plus 4 all over 2 to the n minus 2. Okay, so do you agree we could actually break that up in 2 to the 2n minus 2 times by 2 to the n plus 4 over 2 to the n minus 2. And again, I'm hoping you realize that you can let x equal 2 to the n, then x squared would be 2 to the 2n, right? And we could substitute that in. We could say we have got x squared minus 2x plus 4 over x minus 2, which would equal x minus 2, x minus 2 over x minus 2, these cancel, which is x minus 2, which is 2 to the n minus 2. And that would be your final answer. Hmm, not a bad question at all. Right, now on to um, analytical geometry. So therefore we're on to paper 2. Revision, which is great. It's always good to do paper 2 revision. Um, so here we go. We've got C is the center of the circle. We've got A is at minus 2, 5. We have C is at P, negative 1. And we've got B, which is at 7, Q. And it says the first thing it wants us to do is calculate the values of P and Q. Okay, well, that's pretty easy because we can use the midpoint theorem, okay, because C is the center of the circle and this is obviously a diameter so this is halfway between these two so we can use the midpoint the midpoint says that x1 plus x2 over 2 equals x dot average and similarly y1 plus y2 over 2 is equal to y average okay so if we call this point 1 and this point 2 do you agree we could say minus 2 plus 7 over 2 is equal to the x midpoint, right? So minus 2 plus 7 is going to be 
five over two is equal to the x average or x point. So p is five over two. Similarly, we can work at q. We can go five plus q over two is equal to negative one. Therefore, five plus q is equal to negative two. Therefore, q is going to be minus two minus five, which equals minus seven. So that point there is minus seven. Yay. Right, next. Okay, so this is an interesting question when it comes to analytical geometry. It says, in the diagram A is 0.29, B is minus 6 minus 1, C is C negative 2, and D is 12D, and E is E7. Okay, it says calculate the value, values of D if A, B, A, and D are collinear. So if they're collinear, it means they have the same gradient. The same gradient. Okay, which means that M of A, B has to equal M of A, D. Okay, or M of B, A, shall I say, it's all the same thing. So let's call this point 2 and this point 1 in the first instance and point 1 and point 2 in the second instance. So therefore we've got y2, which is minus 1, minus 9, over minus 6, minus 2, is equal to this gradient here, which is going to be d minus 9, over 12 minus, actually it's the wrong way around, sorry, I just realized, it's the wrong way around, it's going to be, well actually it doesn't matter, but let's just keep it consistent, it's going to be 9 minus d over 2 minus 12, that's better, so this is minus 10 over minus 8, is 9 minus d over negative 10. So therefore we've got 100 over negative 8 is equal to 9 minus d. So we can divide both of these by 2 and we get 50 over negative 4 is equal to minus 9 is equal to negative d. <clears throat> Therefore, we can say, and we can divide this by 2 again, so we get 2 and that's 25. So you've got minus 12 and a half minus 9 is equal to negative d. So that becomes 21 and a half equals d. So this point here is 21 and a half. Right, excellent. Now it says, calculate C if AB is perpendicular to BC. If AB is perpendicular to BC. Okay, if they're perpendicular, then their gradients, when multiplied together, form the value minus one. Okay, so what we need to do is first think about the gradients, okay? So, what we're saying is the gradient of AB has to equal minus 1 over the gradient of BC. Now, the gradient of AB we can get, that's pretty easy. M of AB is equal to minus 1 minus 9 over minus 6 minus 2, which is minus 10 over negative 8 which is going to be 5 over 4. Okay, so the gradient of this is 5 over 4. Therefore, we can say the gradient of BC is equal to minus 4 over 5. Right, which means that we can then find C because we know that using these two points, we can say that that has to equal um, minus two minus minus one over C minus minus six. 
Okay, so therefore we've got minus 4 over 5 multiplied by c plus 6 is equal to minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. Therefore, you've got c plus 6 is equal to negative 1 times by negative 5 over 4, which is going to be just 5 over 4, and then we subtract 6. So we get one and a quarter minus six, which becomes minus five, four and three quarters. Ta -da. And unfortunately, grade 11s, so we've run out of time. So please join me again on Wednesday when we'll carry on with this exam paper. Have a great day.